the sun goes down and the moon comes up I turned into a teenage coffee bar All right, hello there, Thrill Seekers. That was a little snippet of a song called Goo Goo Muck. It was originally recorded by Ronnie Cook, uh, but the version that most people know is the one by the Cramps. Uh, Let me show you this. It's my little Cramps uh, treasure, I suppose. This, uh, This book is apparently really hard to get and expensive if you find it, but my friend Alex Wald uh, gave me a copy, which was really nice of him. Uh, so I've got one of these. <laughs> it's uh, appar- Apparently there's a new biography of the Cramps out now. I saw it when I was in England, but I didn't buy it because I already have this one. So uh, I, might get it. I might get it anyway. Anyhow, nobody knows what a goo-goo muck is, but I figure a goo-goo muck is probably a kind of demon, so I would talk to you about Dogen's demons. And I spent a bunch of time on researching this because the word demon comes up quite often in Dogen's writings throughout Shobo Genzo and elsewhere and it's usually a translation of ma. Uh, Akuma is the most common word I know so I'll put it on the screen. Akuma is a kind of a, a demon so it's an evil demon and uh, the ma apparently comes from mara who was the the tempter of the buddha when he was there's a story in buddhism which is very similar in fact uh, a lot of people think there might be must be a connection but it's very similar to the story of Jesus's temptation in the desert by the devil. Buddha goes through the same thing 500 years earlier and uh, and is tempted by Mara to give up his, his quest for enlightenment. But I, I did a bunch of research looking for all the instances of the word demon and I made a whole list for y'all to give you. And then I discovered that there's one passage in Shobo Genzo book three in which Dogen talks a lot about demons and gets kind of specific. It appears in a chapter called Hotsu Bodaishin, Establishment of the Bodhi Mind. That's the mind that seeks to be enlightened. There's a little bit of a preview before you get to the demon part that you have to hear to understand, so I'm going to shorten it and just tell you. So it goes like this. The Buddha says, How do bodhisattvas guard the one matter, namely the bodhi mind, the mind that seeks to be enlightened? Bodhisattva mahasattvas, those are people who seek to be enlightened, constantly endeavor to guard this bodhi mind as worldly people protect an only child or as the one-eyed protect their remaining eye. And so forth and so on. It's, It's about how much you want to protect the bodhi mind. But I like what Dogen says about this, so I'm going to skip over the rest. Here's Dogen's comments. The Buddha's words on guarding the Bodhi mind are evidently like this. The reason we guard it and never permit backsliding. I I used to hear backsliding a lot when I was trying to figure out if I could be a Christian when I was a a youngster. I went to churches and they talked about backsliders, and those were the people who who were Christians once and then became Buddhists or something. I guess I was a backslider. I don't know. I was never really a Christian. Anyway, they never permit backsliding is that, as popular custom has it, there are three things which, though born, do not reach maturity. They are fish eggs, amra fruit, which is apparently mangoes, and a bodhisattva who has established the mind. Now, I don't know why they say fish eggs and mangoes don't (laughs) achieve maturity, but... uh, but I think that's interesting that bodhisattvas don't achieve maturity. They, they don't. Uh, well, let's see what he says about this. Because in general, there are so many people who regress and lose the bodhi mind. I, Dogen talks about himself in the first person here, which he doesn't do very often in Shobo Genzo. So here we go. I have long feared that I also might regress and lose it. So that's interesting. Dogen worried that he might regress and lose his bodhi mind. For this reason, I guard the Bodhi mind. Bodhisattvas often regress or stray from the Bodhi mind when they are beginners because they do not meet a true teacher. 
Without meeting a true teacher, they do not hear the right dharma. Without hearing the right dharma, they are likely to negate cause and effect, to negate salvation, to negate the three treasures, and to negate all the dharmas of the three times. Idly craving the five desires of the present, they lose the virtue for the future attainment of Bodhi. And the five desires are uh, desires for pleasure through sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch. They are also categorized as desires for property, sexual love, food, food and drink as one thing, fame, and sleep. So my desire for this cramps thing is a hindrance to my uh, Bodhi mind. So let's just continue. And here's where we get to the demon part. Sometimes, in order to hinder a practitioner, celestial demons, papiyas, and the like will take on the shape of a Buddha or will appear in the shape of a parent, a teacher, or relatives, gods, and so on. And a papiya and a celestial demon are kind of interesting. Celestial demon generally refers to the demons who rule uh, paranirmita, Vasa Vartin Heaven. So uh, I, I never, as you can tell, never bother to learn all these things, but there are multiple heavens and multiple hells in Buddhism. So that's kind of the point there that you might be interested in. Uh, which, is, which was thought to house the palace of Mara, who I just told you about, the king of the demons. Hajun, which is the word that Dogen actually uses, represents the sound of the Sanskrit papiyas, so they translated it as papiyas, which means most wicked ones. And the celestial Mara papiyas uh, can be thought of as one concept referring to one individual, but Dogen, however, makes it plural. It's difficult to make plurals in Japanese. My wife is studying Japanese right now, and uh, she, it's kind of funny. The plurals are, are, are throwing her off because the words are the same in plural or singular. When, when they're nouns. But there are ways to figure out if it's a plural or not, but I won't go into that. Thus drawing near the demons, they concoct fictions and prevail upon the Bodhisattva, saying, the Buddha's truth is far distant. You would suffer long hardships and experience the deepest sorrow. The better course is to resolve your own life and death first, and then to deliver living beings. That's what the demons say. And now Dogen says, the practitioner hearing these tales regresses from the Bodhi mind and regresses in the conduct of a Bodhisattva. Remember, talk such as the above is just the talk of demons. Bodhisattvas must recognize it and not follow it. Just never regress or stray from your conduct and vow to deliver others before attaining deliverance yourself. Know that talk that would turn you against the conduct and vow to deliver others before attaining deliverance yourself that's enlightenment could also be substituted for deliverance there, it is the talk of demons. Know it is the, as the talk of non-Buddhists and know it as the talk of bad companions. Never follow it at all. Okay, so that's the preamble. And now Dogen gets into talking about specific kinds of demons. So this being Halloween season, I forgot to mention that. Uh, that's why I chose to, to talk about demons here. So here are the four kinds of demons. There are four kinds of demons. The first is demons of hindrance. The second is demons of the five aggregates. The third is demons of death. And the fourth is celestial demons. I always like the celestial demons because that invokes something. That sounds crazy. Demons of hindrance of what are called the 108 hindrances and so on discriminate 84,000 miscellaneous hindrances. So... A demon of hindrances uh, comes from the Sanskrit klesa, which means affliction, trouble, the cause of suffering, that which disturbs our balance and hinders our actions. And this list of the uh, six or ten klesas, uh, basic causes of suffering in varying numbers, uh, blah, 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 uh, these are, I'll just give you the, the hindrances, that, there's a lot of preamble here. Here, here are some of them that they enumerate in the old Buddhist texts. Craving, anger, ignorance, arrogance, doubt, wrong view. Uh, another list gives them as negligence, indolence, unbelief, sloth. That's a good one. Uh, disdain. Sloths are nice. What's wrong with sloths? Come on. Disdain, shamelessness, lack of reserve, wrath. That's, a, that's another one of the seven deadly sins along with sloth. Anyway, hypocrisy. Uh, meanness, envy, affliction, t 
tendency to do harm, continual enmity. What is enmity? I never know what that word means. Uh, duplicity, roguery. Ooh, roguery. Uh, presumption. So you make an ass out of you and me when you assume something. So I guess presumption, assumption, right? Uh, drowsiness. Uh, that's a nice one. Uh, and remorse. So those are the afflictions. Let's just con uh, continue on. Uh, demons of the five aggregates are the primary and cooperating causes which combine to produce hindrances. So this is a this is the next category of demons. I guess we're up to category two. Uh, demons of the five, ag five aggregates. And the five aggregates are... Buddhists don't believe that people are a soul embodied in a body. What they think is that, that people are a combination of five aggregates. And what's kind of interesting is uh, Nishijima and Cross give you a list, several lists of the five aggregates. So I'm going to go through them quickly. Uh, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary is that? No, Marion Williams. Anyway, this great Sanskrit dictionary that I can't... Not Merriam-Webster. Dang, what is it called? Uh, if I remember it, I'll put it on the screen. But the MW Sanskrit Dictionary gives them as uh, bodily form, sensation, perceptions, the aggregate of formations, and consciousness or thought faculty. Thich Nhat Hanh, so Nishijima Roshi uh, cites Thich Nhat Hanh. Uh, gives them as form or bodily and physical forms, feelings, perceptions, mental functionings, consciousness. Uh, the uh, TRV Murti lists them as matter or material forms, feeling, ideation, apprehension, or of determining marks. Uh, the forces, that's number four, is the forces, mental and material that condition existential entities, and five, consciousness. Everybody agrees on consciousness, but... Uh, this guy, uh, T.R.V. Murti, also defines consciousness as pure awareness without content. And Venerable, D D Venerable Dr. U. Ruwata Dhamma uh, lists them as matter, sensations or feelings, perceptions, uh, following the arising of sensations, mental formations, and, and i.e. all our actions in daily life, and five, consciousness. This uh, Dr. Dhamma, Rawata Dhamma, notes that sensations and perceptions are not volitional actions and so do not produce any karmic force, whereas samskara produces actual karmic effects. So, my gosh, that's a lot. Every time I get into talking about the five skandhas, it gets sticky and tricky, and I've done it in, I don't know which of my books. I'm pretty sure I did it in the newest book, The Other Side of Nothing, and in Hardcore Zen, and probably in other books. You know, in the end of the day, I don't worry too much about the specifics of it. It's just the idea that there isn't a single soul that you are. It's just the coming together of these five things. And, and five is almost an arbitrary number. You could probably divide them differently. Anyway, demons of the five aggregates are the primary and cooperating causes which combine to produce hindrances. So they cause the hindrances. We have this body of the four elements, uh, which are, let's see, earth, water, fire, and wind. So that's the elements that they thought of back in then, those days, so we don't have to worry about that. We've got this body of the four elements, material elements, together with matter made from the four elements and matter sensed through the eyes and other organs. This is called the aggregate of matter. The sum of feelings, such as those of the 108 hindrances, is called the aggregate of feelings. So now he's defining the skandhas. Differentiation and synthesis of the countless thoughts, great and small, that we have is called the aggregate of thought. Uh, through the occurrence of pleasure and displeasure, there can arise habits which accommodate or do not accommodate mental tr mental states, Sorry, such as greed, anger, and so on. This is called the aggregate of conduct. Uh, combination of the six senses and their six objects gives rise to the six kinds of consciousness. So that's consciousness. And when he talks about six senses, I always say this, the sixth sense is mind as a sense, and objects of mind are what the, the, the mind senses. So it's not the sixth sense in the case of that, uh, that old movie. The countless and limitless states of mind, which are the differentiation and synthesis of these six kinds of consciousnesses, are called the aggregate of consciousness. And this idea of there being six consciousnesses comes from the Yogacara school of Buddhism. And here's 
something I thought was interesting. This is Nishijima and Cross's little footnote about consciousness, but it kind of goes into Yogacara. So consciousness, thus defined as the combination of subject and object, is the basis of the teaching of Yuishiki, consciousness alone. This teaching elucidated in the so-called Yogacara Vijnanavada school, stemming from the 21st Patriarch Vasubandhu, affirms the all-embracing reality of consciousness, whereby grass, trees, stars, pebbles, and so on, are all seen as manifestations of seeds of store consciousness, Alaya Vijnana. So, it's a bit different from idealism. Idealism has it that the material world is is not real and consciousness is real. The Yogacara school sees these things as real, as grass, trees, stars, pebbles, and so on, material objects, but sees them as fundamentally manifestations of consciousness. So they're not unreal, but they are manifestations of consciousness. So that's that's how they say it. Uh, now we go on to the next demon. Demons of death. Ooh, that's scary. That's a good Halloween one. Through the impermanence of direct and cooperating causes break the momentary... This is what the demons of death do. They break the momentary succession of lives, so that we're talking about reincarnation, of the five aggregates and utterly remove three things, consciousness, heat, and life. We therefore call them demons of death. He doesn't say a whole lot about it, that one, but let's uh, get on to the next category of demons. Celestial demons. I love those. And the footnote says, uh, these are ten shima. Demons who are the sons of heaven. Uh, represents the Sanskrit Deva Putra Mara. Here the term represent, refers to demons in the terror, sorry, para near mitas vasa vatran heaven okay we talked about that already the sixth and highest heaven in the world of desires so that's kind of an interesting concept you might want to file away in your head is that heavens in buddhist terms are somewhat similar to the christian idea of heaven but they are still places in the world of desire there's they're not the ultimate place you want to go heaven is is a temporary place temporary it might last thousands or millions of years but it's still temporary and that's that's kind of something to be avoided so heaven and hell are both places to be avoided in buddhist thinking so celestial demons as rulers of the world of desire deeply attach to worldly pleasures and rely upon expectation of gain so when you want when you want to get something that's a celestial demon acting on you therefore they rise sorry therefore they give rise to wrong views they hate and envy all sages and saints ways and methods of nirvana we call these celestial demons and he sums up by giving a definition of Mara, which is what he's been talking about, the demons. Mara is an Indian word. In China, it is called a being which is able to steal life. Only demons of death can actually steal life. So we're back to demons of death. But the others are also able to produce the direct and cooperating causes of taking of life. Okay, so, yeah, okay, take, take back what I just said. He's talking about all the demons. Moreover, they take away the life of wisdom. Mm. Uh, for this reason, we call them killers. And then he says, Someone asks, One category, the demons of the five aggregates, covers the other three kinds of demon. Why do you separate them and explain them as four? The answer is as follows. In fact, it is one demon, but for the purposes of analysis, there are four. Buddhism also often does this, this idea of there is... We have this idea of the universe is one thing, but we still analyze it into many things, and, and sometimes this goes on. And so he, he basically ends the thing saying, the foregoing is the teaching of the ancestral master Nagarjuna. Okay, so that thing I just read you, I said it was Dogen, that's Nagarjuna. So just rewind and pretend I said that in the beginning before I started reading all these definitions of demons. The definitions of demon stuff is from Nagarjuna, not Dogen. Never idly be worried by demons into regressing or straying from the Bodhi mind. This is to guard the Bodhi mind. So basically, in the end, he says, don't worry about demons. So don't worry about demons. I just thought I would give you 
a little thing from Shobo Genzo where he talks about demons. Usually when he talks about demons, you can kind of think of them as psychological issues and problems and stuff. Whether Dogen believed in real demons, you know, running around, hopping around with little tails and stuff and horns on their heads is kind of an open question as far as I can see. There are some places in Shobo Genzo where he talks about demons as if there are real demons. Um, there's one story where the guy is um, straying from the vegetarian diet that's prescribed in the monastery and the master allows him to eat meat and somebody asks the master why and the master says well there's actually a demon sitting on top of his head who's eating the meat and he's just being troubled by this demon so that's why I allow him to, be, to eat meat so you know you get this kind of idea that maybe people thought about things in that way but I don't worry about it too much I don't actually believe there's little demons running around unless they're aliens and UFOs see we could go into that but this video is already too long so I'll leave you with that that's Dogen's demons for you I hope you enjoyed that little lesson if you want to contribute to me making more little lesson videos like this you can go to the URL you're seeing on the screen below which is hardcorezen.info slash donate that is hardcorezen.info slash donate there you will find my PayPal and Patreon links. Those uh, are my main way of making a living and I appreciate your support, but you don't got to support me if you don't want to. Also, I will be in Bozeman, Montana soon. And if you want more information on that, go to the link you're seeing on the screen below, which is hardcoresn.info slash events. All right. See you later. Have a good time all the time. Bye. As we can see here, Ziggy is responding to the demon of sloth. He looks like a little sloth, doesn't he, on his little bed there? You know, I guarantee you, Ziggy does move around sometimes. It's just every time I want to get one of these cameos, he's laying down. All right, we'll see you later, Ziggy. Bye.